there are some teams that do well in the prior season, and then the upcoming season, it kind of lists down. Mm-hmm. Who's first on your list of teams that could disappoint us in 2021? So I know they just uh, re-signed their, their franchise quarterback in, in long term, but I'm going to start with the Dallas Cowboys. And I know every year the Dallas Cowboys are always hyped for success every year. They got Dak Prescott. They got CeeDee Lamb. They got, of course, we can't forget about Ezekiel Elliott. They went defense in the draft. They drafted your old head uh, coach and Dan Quinn to coach the defense. They brought over Keanu Neal. But you, you look at their schedule. I mean, shoot, week one, you go to the world champions. You can't tell me that they are not going to go in there and knock off Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. I don't think so. And then you look at you look at the the, the NFC South or not? They, well, they also play Atlanta, but they also get us. They get um, the Panthers as well. But then you look at the Broncos. You look at the Raiders at home, and then you got to go to Kansas City, to the Chargers, to the Vikings, to the Patriots. And with the thirty first strength, thirty first toughest schedule, that was kind of a joke. I was like. They have all these home and away opponents, but yet they they have the I would what I guess what they rank them as the weakest uh, strength of schedule. That's a gauntlet to go to Minnesota, New England, Tampa, New Orleans, you know Kansas City. You know they they could be very well back in in the five hundred range. You know sub five hundred in a in a division that's already kind of topsy turvy in the NFC least. But uh, you know I, I just don't see them really you know taking a step forward this year uh especially you know even though Dak Prescott as great as he is you know it's it's a gauntlet to to try to beat teams like that and and try to be one of the top contenders in the NFC yeah man interesting stuff because uh the Dallas Cowboys have just the Cowboys fans are just waiting for Dak Prescott to get healthy and like Mm -hmm. by the looks of practice and him training and everything he's fully ready to go and they're mm-hmm. just like, yeah, that's the one thing that we're holding on to that could get mm-hmm. us over the hill and over the hump and get mm-hmm. us back to glory. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you're saying they're a disappointing team based off the strength of schedule or, or the away games, at least, that they have. The yeah. Dallas Cowboys, I, I agree with you, could disappoint just based off of, you know, the, the games that they have on the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you say your next disappointing team is? So the next disappointing team is the team that, gosh, we've been hearing about every single day since the draft, and that is the Green Bay Packers. Uh, they have the fourth toughest schedule, but obviously you get all the drama right now surrounding the diva that is Aaron Rodgers. You know, you, not only do you have your own uh, in-division opponents in the NFC North, but you've got the Browns, the Rams, Steelers, Seahawks, and Washington at home. They obviously come to our house week one. I'm looking forward to it. Rogers or no Rogers, it makes no difference to me. Um, so I'm very much glad that we're America's game of the week instead of the Dallas Cowboys. It's kind of nice not to hear Troy and 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 I uh, can't forget the Buck Joe Buck's name. Good lord! Um, but you know their their away games are the Cardinals, Ravens, Bengals, Chiefs, uh, Saints, and Niners. I just feel like Green Bay. You know everything that's going on with Aaron Rodgers, I think, is really you know affecting the team. And everything, everything that's surrounding it, you know, we hear it every single day. We turn on Sports Center, you turn on, you know, FS1. No matter what sports channel you turn on, you're hearing something about Aaron Rodgers. And I feel like he's he's a distraction. It really is right now. Call it what you will. You know, he's a distraction to the team. And I think Matt Lafleur, if they have to start Week One at New Orleans with Jordan Love, it could be a very tough, long year for the Green Bay Packers and their fans. More specifically, Matt Lafleur. Uh, Randy McMichael touched based on it last week. He said, you know, if, if Matt LaFleur is going to have to start the year without Aaron Rodgers for the first time in two years, he's going to have to actually coach for a living, you know, because they kind of felt like Matt LaFleur really hasn't done coaching the last few years. It's been all Aaron Rodgers. But, you know, if he's got to start week one in New Orleans with Jordan Love, I mean, whew, it's going to be a very long season for Packers and the Packers fan base as well. Yeah, I hate to say it. I mean, it's all depending on, yeah, if, what happens to Rodgers is the distraction aspect of it that's going to let this team down, whether he plays or he doesn't play. And we obviously know that if he doesn't play, then this Packers team is going to look like a much different team. And uh, mm-hmm. they're definitely going to have to work some pieces around and, and move mm-hmm. some roster pieces. And, and really, like you said, Matt LaFleur has to coach for the first yeah. time, which is an in- interesting statement, but could also be very true. Uh, mm-hmm. So now you've got the Cowboys, the Packers as your disappointing teams. you got one more. Who is it? So one. More, so the last one I got for you, uh, believe it or not, I mean, they're already bad as it is. They, too, have been starving 
uh, to get back to the championship since 2017. Now, how about the Jacksonville Jaguars? Uh, they currently have the 18th toughest schedule, but, you know, it's not so much the opponents. You know, I, I can name you the opponents, you know, at home. Obviously, they're interdivisional opponents, but you got the Falcons, Cardinals, Bills, Broncos, Dolphins, Niners, all at home. And then on the road at Cincy, at the Rams, Patriots, Jets, Seahawks. And then they start week one at Houston. But again, the, the same thing that's happening in Jacksonville, or rather what's happening in Green Bay, is happening in Jacksonville. We talked about it earlier, you know, with the Colts winning the South because the AFC South is so up and down because obviously right now everything surrounding Jacksonville with the drama of Tim Tebow is also a distraction to that organization. It's a distraction to the locker room. You know, they yeah, – you, yes, you go out and you draft the, the, the top – player in the NFL draft and Trevor Lawrence, you know, to be the face of your franchise. Well, it's kind of hard to be the face of your franchise if everything right now is about Tim Tebow. And Jaguars fans are striving for a winning franchise. I mean, you haven't had a successful Jaguars franchise since Mark Brunel, you know, way back in the in the, the early 90s. You know, Jaguars fans have been starving for a championship. They've been starving for a winning team. And it's kind of hard to do that right now. You know, the opponents are, are not too bad, but you – and the schedule sets up quite favorably for them. But first-year head coach, rookie quarterback, and then obviously you're, you're thinking about bringing on a uh, 33, now 34-year-old tight end or quarterback that's fixing the play tight end. You know, it causes a lot of distractions for that team. And so I just don't see Jacksonville really, you know, getting – moving in the right direction as of right now they're they're I feel like they're moving backwards rather than they are forward yeah I hate to say it I think this could be the first time that Trevor Lawrence loses a regular season game in his whole entire life I mean that's mm -hmm. pretty much a given but uh yeah let's mm -hmm. see what happens with Tim Tebow now it's it was pretty much a guaranteed deal now you like you said it's 50 50 let's see if it happens or not